This next affliction is one of mankind's oldest medical mysteries. No one's certain what causes it, how to cure it, and it has no clearly visible symptoms. But you know it when you hear it. I'm talking about stuttering. So, if stuttering is as old as speech itself, why are we no closer to solving it? Here's Chris Cuomo. <laughs> if you look at this vibrant 17-year-old, you see an outgoing, popular, accomplished athlete, an A student who's on her way to college. But listen to her introduce herself. Rebecca Glass. Rebecca Glass has stuttered since second grade. Diane's her mom. You thought it was Tourette's? It was pretty wild. She was moving her head and twitching her eyes. She was speaking, trying to get the sound out. You know, good days, bad days. Her parents would soon learn that Rebecca is an example of one of the greatest known medical mysteries, stuttering. Speech disrupted by long pauses and frequent repetitions, often accompanied by facial tics and tremors. And there is no known cure. I just better hurry. I just got to exceed 10 minutes to catch my plane. Stuttering is something that's often mocked. And people like Rebecca are often judged harshly. When people would hear you stutter, they would see that as a reflection of how you think, not some just how you think. Yes, yeah, some would. Some thought that it meant that I wasn't intelligent or some, some thought that. Over three million Americans stutter, and four out of five of them are male. Most outgrow it in childhood, but many famous stutterers did not. British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, actor James Earl Jones, actress Marilyn Monroe, ABC's own John Stossel. Like many with this condition, Rebecca tried years of speech therapy, but with limited success. Her many friends grew to ignore it, but it wasn't always easy. If someone was teasing me, it was hard to stand up from myself. What is it like to you when you're speaking and you're stuck on something? Um, f frustrating because it's high and how exactly what I want to say, and I can say it in my head so, so many <laughs> times. Despite stuttering's long history, doctors understand little about it. It's one of the great medical mysteries of all time. There are Egyptian hieroglyphs that describe stuttering very clearly. The Bible says that even Moses was slow of speech. Today, doctors say 50% of stutterers are thought to have inherited the condition. Dr. Dennis Drena, a geneticist at the National Institutes of Health, has spent years trying to locate the genes that cause stuttering. A genetic cause gets you all the way down to the level of genes and molecules. And it could, in fact, allow us to guide therapy strategies for different groups of people depending on what mutations they do or don't have. Even if Drena finds the genes, a cure could take years. A drug called Pagoclone treats dopamine levels in the brain and may help some people. But it's still in clinical trials, not yet approved by the FDA. And besides, for Rebecca, the future is now. She's about to begin college. A new group of strangers, new introductions. Our job has been to help children. And this man, another stranger, Dr. Joe Kalinowski, may be the person who changes Rebecca's life. When we come back, could this doctor change Rebecca's life? He understands. He, too, was a stutterer. I'm in hell. How do I get out? Can his invention make her halting words? Colorado's. A thing of the past? Next. Rebecca Glass. Rebecca Glass, a stutterer, has tried years of therapy in an effort to speak more easily. Nothing has worked, and now she's heading off to school, facing the prospect of introductions, questions, a college social life. 
but she hasn't tried what Dr. Joe Kalinowski has pioneered. He's a speech therapist who knows all about Rebecca's frustration because he too has been a severe stutterer since childhood. People don't realize what kind of obstacle it can put up, like just talking on the phone. You didn't really want to talk on the phone until you were in your 40s. Yeah, I don't like the phone still. I still don't like the phone terribly. Growing up, Dr. Kalinowski says he was ridiculed so much it was almost more than he could bear. I remember the first day of school, and I just started to stutter so badly, and these kids were brutal. They'd ask my name over and over. I knew then, I'm in hell. How do I get out? And I couldn't. And it was then that my father cried, and I have never seen him tear up, but he cried because of my pain. But now Dr. Kalinowski has found a way to help the millions of other stutterers. His breakthrough is based on one of the mysteries of stuttering. Watch this. We, we have, have very briefly, briefly described, described five theoretical, theoretical orientations that, that have helped shape the field of stuttering over the last... For some reason, most people don't stutter at all when they speak in unison. It's called the choral effect. The hypothesis is that two people are talking at the same time and it helps the brain inhibit the block that's happening in the brain. What Dr. Kalinowski and a team at East Carolina University have done is find an end run around whatever it is that makes stuttering happen. The device called a speech easy uses the choral effect, repeating the stutterer's own speech. It fits into the canal of one ear like a hearing aid. And, and when, when the, the person, person speaks, speaks it, it alters, alters the pitch, pitch and, and then plays, plays the, the words, words back milliseconds later. later. This is what's called a dry aid kit. So can a tiny device erase a lifetime of stuttering? Rebecca and her family are about to find out. This is a very big moment. So what are you feeling here, young lady? I'm excited. I'm very, very excited. They're in the office of speech pathologist Dr. John Haskell, and on his desk, is Rebecca's own speech easy. She's always going to be wonderful no matter whether she has this or not, but if she can blossom and be the person that she can truly be, all the better. First, Rebecca reads for the doctor to get her baseline measurement. A Colorado State University Microbiologist. This is your speech easy. Angle it in, that's right. It's going to sound a little strange. <laughs> yeah. Good, I guess we're in the right place. Yeah. Nice, nice to, to see, see you again. again. Now the family holds right. their breath for the moment of truth. Okay. As the device plays Rebecca's own voice back inside her ear a millisecond after she speaks, Rebecca reads again. Caesar traveled from one farm to another. He convinced the grape pickers in California to join together and strike for better pay and working conditions. He organized the first successful farm workers union in the United States. Wow. Hey. That's good. I'm blown away by how simple that was. I just, that's amazing. It is amazing. Can you see it? When she was reading this, I knew where she was going to stutter. And I was just waiting, and it didn't happen. I kept waiting, and it didn't happen. So I didn't realize how I paced myself to it, but that's great. We all just want to hear you talk. <laughs> Don't stop talking. Ironically, at this moment, Rebecca is speechless. <laughs> but her smile says it all. You know, it's not like, like it, was a, it was a big surgery or anything. I can just take it in and out, and it's not a big deal. And. and how it's hey and now it's the same as i am before i can just say that a lot quicker somehow we don't think rebecca will ever be speechless again we're happy for her but must also warn her it may not last devices like that do work one cured me but just temporarily Many stutterers go back to stuttering again once we get used to the delayed feedback in our ear. 
So the best lasting results come from combining a device like that with longer term therapy. And what exactly was the combination that worked best for you? I went through a much more tedious three week course where they retaught us how to make each sound and that eventually helped me. And did it, is it completely conquered for you all over? No, I still stutter, but not tonight. <laughs> That's good news. All right, thanks. We've got